Hello everyone, welcome to Comical Comments, where we talk about comic books. Now I'm back with the granddaddy of all Civil Wars. We're talking about Marvel Civil War. Not Civil War 2, Civil War 1. When Iron Man and Captain America fought each other, cut to see who was else, whose dick was bigger. I want to give you some background. Captain... Captain America, we all know who Captain America is. You know, the symbol of America, America's ass. And Iron Man. Billionaire philanthropist. Genius. Iron Man. So, we'll give you a little background of, on Civil War. The Thunderbolts, not Thunderbolts. I don't think they're called the Thunderbolts. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, Thunderbolts? Thund they're Thunder somethings. Can't remember... The New Warriors? I think they're called the New Warriors. I'm sorry. The New Warriors. This show is completely unedited, actually, so I I'm sorry. <laughs> the New Warriors go to a town in Connecticut. They're chasing a supervillain named Speedball. That's Speedball. I can't remember his name. They're chasing a supervillain. He explodes. He kills some children. Takes out an entire city block. The government requires all the superheroes to register. Uh... And there's pro-registration, anti-registration, which is anti-registration is Captain America, and pro-registration is Iron Man. In which, the registered superheroes will finally get a paycheck for doing all this life-threatening shit. Which is good for them. Anti-registration? You're still gonna be broke. <laughs> You're still gonna have to live normal day lives. Actually, you probably couldn't, because... You have superpowers. They're gonna find you. Your friends know who you are. So that's always an issue. Let's jump into Civil War and see if it's still good. Because I don't believe it is. Enjoy. Civil War is a 2006 to 2007 Marvel Comics crossover storyline consisting of seven issues limited series of the same name written by Mark Miller and penciled by Steve McNiven and various other tie-in books published by Marvel at the time. The story builds upon the events that developed in previous Marvel storylines, particularly Avengers Dissembled, House of M, and Dissemination, the tagline of which the series is, Whose Side Are You On? The story... Well, the story is more or less... not interesting. I mean, the rest of it is, but... The beginning is not. Let's jump into the story of this f big fucking multi-issue event, which went into different books, even books with talking animals. <laughs> talking animals. Let know what? Let's look how many fucking books and how this event crossed over into so many different situations. Let's look. At Okay, now here we look at this list of how many books were being tied in and you know, it, it was a mess. It was just absolutely a goddamn fucking clusterfuck. Let, let, let's, 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 let's take a look. Let, let's look at this. Let, let, me, let me rattle you off the amount of books that this event was in. The Amazing Spider-Man, Black Panther, Blade. Cable and Deadpool, Amer Captain America, Civil War, Civil War Choosing Sides, Civil War Battle Damage Report, Civil War Files, Civil War Frontline, Civil War Opening Shot, Civil War The Confession, Civil War The Initiative, Civil War War Crimes, Civil War The Return, Civil War X-Men, Civil War Young Avengers Runaways, Daredevil 87, Fallen Sun, The Death of Captain America, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Captain America, Casualties of War, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, New Avengers, New X-Men, Punisher War Journal, New Avengers, The Sensational Spider-Man, She-Hulk, Thunderbolts, <sighs> Winter Soldier, Wolverine, X-Factor, Civil War had a poster book, Daily Bugle Civil War newspaper special, there was a fucking newspaper released about Civil War, Marvel Encyclopedia 
Marvel Spotlight Captain America remembered they had an in memoriam book. Civil War Aftermath. There's just the, the aftermath of Civil War. Civil War Spotlight. Mark Miller and Mark Nevin. Number one, they had a Civil War Spotlight about the creators of this book. Ultimate Civil War Spider Ham. Number one, there is a Spider Ham tie in for this series. A spider ham tie in. What does that say <laughs> about the gravitas this book was supposed to portray? And then there's what if Civil War, which I will cover in this video or the next video, whatever one I feel like doing. Oh my god, I just, I just. Uh, it's, this was huge. This was a huge undertaking. And I'm going to talk about the story now. Let's jump into it. Civil War starts off the New Warriors, Night Thrasher, Nomarita, Speedball, and Microbe battle a group of supervillains, Cobalt Man, Speed Freak, Cold Heart, and Nitro in Stamford, Connecticut while filming a reality TV show. Nitro pretty much fucking explodes! Killing more than 600 people, including school children, and all of the new warriors except Speedball. There's a reason for that. Let's read on. The rest of the superheroes appear in Stanford to search for survivors. Why would you have a superhero reality show? I like how superheroes are this big thing in this universe, but I don't think we need superhero reality shows. That's just taking it a little bit too far. Public opinion turns against super superhumans, even the inactive members of the New Warriors are branded as baby killers. Because they technically are. They are baby killers. In hindsight, despite the distance, himself from his team releases their secret identities online. And several are attacked. In bars. Because most of them are assholes. I, I, I get it. I get it, the past members were a little, you know, on edge of the fact that their team, former team, murdered 600 people by accident. Well, they didn't actually murder them, they took part in the murder because a supervillain that they could have easily stopped, honestly. They could have fucking stopped him immediately, just didn't do it. And several are fucking destroyed. She-Hulk forces Hindsight to shut down the site, and Hindsight is arrested by John Jameson. Angry civilians attack the Human Torch outside of a club. Why would you attack the Human Torch? She's made of fucking fire. Fire. Let that sink in. <laughs> Guided by Iron Man, Congress quickly passes the Superhero Registration Act. The SHRA 6 USC something 58 requiring the registration of the persons with superhuman abilities with the US government and the entitlement of training for those wishing to operate as super, superheroes. The law applies to those who naturally occurring superpowers. Those humans using exotic technology such as Iron Man, or anyone who wants to challenge the superhuman's enactment of the federal law, led to revisions of state criminal codes such as Chapter 40, Article 120, Section 120 of the New York State Penal Code, Section 245D of the California Penal Code. Why did I need to know that there was an actual penal code for this? Why, why, why did I have to actually know? They didn't have to go with those details. They honestly did not. But that's the kind of touches Marvel does with their comics. And it's appreciated sometimes. Captain America refuses to join S.H.I.E.L.D. striking force. Striking force. Striking force sounds like a good comic name. <laughs> Hunting supervillains in violation of the act and is attacked by S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Cape Killers. Cape Killers... That's probably what Heroes in Crisis should have been called for DC. Yeah, I, I, that, that might have worked. <laughs> Even though the act is not passed yet, afterwards he became a fugitive, forms an underground resistance movement known itself as the Secret Avengers, the team includes Hercules, Falcon, Danny Rand, who is acting as Daredevil, and Matt Murdock's place. I don't remember that ever happening. I, I can't remember that happening. Is that a thing? I don't remember that being a thing. Huh. Interesting. 
Back to what we were talking about. Luke Cage and the Young Avengers. Iron Man, Reed Richards, Hank P Henry Pym, and She-Hulk come down in favor of the act. Spider-Man unmasks in the press conference has a show of support for the act. Doctor Strange wants no part of the act and tells Iron Man and Mr. Fantastic they are never going to call on him again. The government declares Doctor Strange exempt from the act. Because he's magic. He's not, that's not superpowers. It's magic. It's magic. The government backs superheroes track down unregistered super, superheroes and subsequently detain and register them. Captain America's Secret Avengers and Iron Man's Avengers end up fighting in the Yancey Street. The Thing, who is also visiting the old neighborhood, gets roped into the crowd control. However, when a young member of the Yancey Street gang is killed in the violence that ensues, Grimm is disgusted with both sides, leaves the country for France. Fucking Ben Grimm leaves the country for France. Does anybody really care about the Fantastic Four? No, of course they don't, because they haven't been relevant for quite a while. They weren't relevant back then. Who gives a fuck about Ben Grimm? The Secret Avengers responding to a false emergency are lured into an ambush by pro-registration forces. As the battle turns against them, a new weapon is brought into the play. Project Lightning, a cyborg clone of Thor created by a few strands of Asgardian hair and empowered by a technological copy of Mjolnir. Confronted by Bill Foster, Thor sends a bolt of lightning through the hero's chest, killing him. With both sides in shock, Captain orders a retreat. Sue Storm shelters the regrouping Super Avengers, Super Avengers? Secret Avengers, what the fuck Super Avengers, under an energy shield, allowing their escape. Why? <laughs> that is the worst thing to ever do. Why would you build a clone of a god and knowing, knowing, knowing it's not being able, not able to be controlled? Why? I get it, Thor was kind of dead at the time. Well, not kinda, he was totally dead. But you don't make clones of your friends. Or at least colleagues, you don't. Do that last time I checked. I hope no one has a clone of me walking around with them, because that would be weird. Knowing me, that clone would be the skinny version of me, and then my life would just be all examples. Remember, kids, do not clone your friends, especially ones who are gods. Don't clone your god friends. This has been a PSA. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Well... Now that that's over my head and stop being angry, let's continue on with the rest of this fucking story. Bill Foster's death shakes up both sides. Structure, Structure and Nighthawk surrender while the Human Torch and Invisible Woman oppose the act. In turn, Pym drafts a subgroup of the Thunderbolts to their cause. Spider-Man demands to see concentration camp style prison facility 42 in a negative zone. He concludes that he has made a mistake by siding with Stark and attempts to defect from Iron Man's side, but is confronted by Iron Man and after a brief battle escapes. Against Iron Man's will, he is hunted down and badly beaten by the Jester and Jack-O-Lantern for the, for, of the new Thunderbolts. The Punisher saves Spider-Man by killing the two villains and carries him into the Secret Avengers hideout. After discovering, uh, but discovering, I mean recovering from his injuries, Spider-Man joins Cap's forces and makes a public statement in which he pledges to fight the Registration Act. A lot of good that's fucking gonna do you, Peter, and then following up story after this, one more day, a lot of, a lot of, you know, good this is gonna do you, you know. Telling people who you are and stuff. I'm not going to give much away, but it's not going to go well for you, Peter. It's not going to go well at all. So Captain America, you know, Captain America doesn't see things correctly sometimes. So the Punisher seeks to join Captain America's forces, pointing out that Iron Man's decision to employ infamous mass murders of enforcers of the act is what has motivated the vigilante to come out of hiding. 
Although crime is at all time low as a result of the Registry of Heroes. Captain America reluctantly accepts Punisher's offer to help. The Punisher! <laughs> Why? Why, Captain America? Why would you want the help of a murderer? <laughs> Is he not aware of what the Punisher does? Does he think that the Punisher hugs people? Like, what is he? Is he not aware of this? The Punisher kills people. These people who you are fighting against happen to be your friends at some point, Captain America. Your friends, Steve. Your friends. Do you want this fucking World War veteran murdering your friends? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. At least I hope not. Damn it, Captain! Damn! The Punisher makes his way through the Baxter building to retrieve plans for the Negative Zone prison. Sue Richards travels to Atlantis to persuade Namor to join the Secret Avengers, although he refuses. The supervillains Goldbug and Plunder arrive at the Secret Avengers base to join Captain America's team, but the Punisher immediately kills them. Of course he fucking did! Of course he did! Leading to Captain America to attack him and kick him out of the group. Boy, Captain America, where did you think this is going to go? I wanted you to know that I am not a fan of these decisions making you've made in this story so far. Just saying. While meditating, Doctor Strange speaks with unto the Watcher, who asks Strange why he doesn't use his immense power to end the conflict. Doctor Strange informs the Watcher, that the Sorcerer Supreme has no business in mankind's internal struggles, but promises to pray for an outcome that will benefit mankind and spill the least amount of blood. As the final battle begins, Cloak transports the combatants to New York City, where Namor and his army of Atlanteans arrive to fight alongside Secret Avengers. The champions, the Thor clone, which... Why? <laughs> and Captain Marvel reinforce Stark's team. Mr. Fantastic saves Invisible Woman from a bullet launched by Taskmaster, and Hercules destroys the Thor clone. Someone needed to. <laughs> the Thing returns to protect the citizens from harm. As much as I hate the Fantastic Four, Ben Grimm is a good old boy. <laughs> As Captain America is about to deliver the final blow to Iron Man, police, EMTs, and firefighters try to restrain him, realizing how much damage the fight has already inflicted upon the very few people who wish to, he, they wish to protect. Captain America surrenders and orders his team to stand down. That was the story of Marvel Civil War. Boy, is it not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to put my honest opinion out there. Civil War is not a good story. Personally for me. I don't know about everybody else. But I personally am not a fan of Civil War. I'm going to spend the last, you know, five minutes of this video discussing the aftermath of everyone's bad decisions. And see what leads up to my next comic I cover one more day. Let's talk about the aftermath. Here's what happened in the aftermath of the Civil War. The President of the United States grants general amnesty to all of the opponents of the Superhero Registration Act who turn themselves in or, or register. However, Captain America, the main opponent to the Registration Act, is arrested and assassinated. Assassinated. America's ass was assassinated. Let's not forget that. Tony Stark is appointed Director of S.H.I.E.L.D., while Maria Hill is demoted to deputy director, the 50-state initiative is set up to eventually place a superhero team in every state. The mighty Avengers assemble as a new team. Some heroes choose to leave the country rather than submit. In Canada, the third Omega fight is gathered. Firestorm retires. The several heroes remain underground, including New Avengers, Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, Ronan, who has actually resurrected Clint Barton, and Echo and Wolverine. Spider-Man's identity is known, causing Jake Jonas Amos in the Sue, which is probably the coolest and funniest issue of Spider-Man I have ever seen. I will cover that eventually. It is real good. Spider-Man, his quipping is strong in that issue. Goliath and Bantham and Typeface and Slipman 
have been killed during the conflict. Tom Foster continues his uncle's legacy, becoming the new Goliath, an assassination an assassin hired by Kingpin misses Spider-Man, but strikes the secondary target of Aunt May. That's going to be covered in my One More Day video. Can't talk about the rest of that detail. Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman take a break from the Fantastic Four to work on their marriage and are replaced by Black Panther and Storm. My favorite Marvel power couple. <laughs> Captain Marvel enters the present day, Speedball's powers and sanity are drastically altered, and he becomes the new Penance, a member of the Thunderbolts. A constituted version of the new Warriors emerges, bearing little resemblance to the original. Most of the former Warriors are part of the Initiative program. Nova returns to Earth after destroying Annihilus and, thro and thwarting his Annihilation Wave with the Nova Corps' world mine in him. He finds out that his former teammates on the New Warriors are dead and decides whether or not to be on the initiative. As he battles the Thunderbolts, he chooses to leave Earth and head for Kree space. That is the aftermath of Civil War. How could Civil War have ended a little bit differently? Well, it could have ended with two groups acting like the Hatfields and the McCoys over what's left of New York. I guess let, let's finish off the Civil War video by talking about what if Civil War ended differently. Let's end this video with what if and some what if scenarios on how Civil War could have ended. And what if Civil War ended differently? A stranger appears in front of the Iron Man and is visiting Captain America's grave at Arlington National Cemetery. Tony Stark is told of two alternate ways the Civil War could have concluded. In the first is detailed in, what if Captain America had led all the heroes against the Registration Act? In this reality, Tony Stark dies of the extremist virus, leaving the US government to choose Captain America as a spokesperson of the heroes who is in, this, has in the regular universe opposes the Registration Act. Although he manages to delay its passing, the Stanford disaster occurs in Earth 616 without Tony Stark to provide a fairer path for registration. The government's response is more extreme. Government forces led by Henry Peter Garlic destroys the resistance and many heroes are slain. Faced with this vision, Tony believes that this proves that he was right to pursue the prostration course of action. But the stranger then reveals another possibility. The second, what if Iron Man lost the Civil War? In this reality, Iron Man asks for Cap's help during the confrontation at the power plant instead of threatening him. Admitting his doubts about this action, rather than trying to justify them, and thus Cap does not use the hidden weapon in his glove to disable Tony, the heroes are then united to defeat the out-of-control Thor clone, Ragnarok, which released a shield agent, which is released when a shield agent detects the weapon and assumes that Cap is still planning to use it. The resulting will, goodwill convinces Iron Man to help run the program as the only one of the heroes will trust with their secret identities. The stranger revealed to be Atsu, Earth 616's Watcher. Upon learning of the possibility of the alternate future, Tony is devastated and weeps for the bright future he helped prevent. The last one, what if Annihilation? The cosmic annihilation war reaches Earth during the war. The heroes unite to neutralize it, and many die in the first clashes. Iron Man and Captain America, after reconciliation, sacrifice themselves along, alongside Nova to deflect the full annihilation wave. Now, there is a story where there are two factions who are leading what's left of New York. One in the red, one in the blue. Essentially, it's basically Hatfield and McCoy's. One led by Captain America, who runs the Iron, and one run by one side of town run by Captain America, who runs the Blue. 
I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. Because I feel it deserves its own separate video. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. I know it's overly long, and most probably people don't watch long videos, but eh. Thank you guys for watching and probably learning something about comic books today. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Snapchat. You know, the, the usual bullshit that most content creators have to do now. Catch you guys later with some more comic books. Later, guys. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I leave, before I leave, before I leave, let's not forget <laughs> that the next following video will be talking about one more day. Catch you guys.